Shalom. Welcome back to Elisha Vision, a prophetic think tank, uh, Issachar Forum. Glad to have you with us. And uh, I love to uh, talk about the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God. We just enjoyed a wonderful Thanksgiving Day here, and, and we want to give him all the praise. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, the fact that you are a loving Heavenly Father. And you're the only living God. And we give all of our praise and honor and glory to you. And it's proper and it belongs to you. And we love you. Thank you for sending your son, Yeshua, Ben Yehovah, Jesus, the Son of God, to be the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Just uh, be with us as we go through the news today that we would see it from your point of view. We don't want a worldview. We want a heaven view of the news. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, hallelujah. Let's get into the news. And I always like to start with my blog. You can find the Elisha Vision commentary at uh, www.elishavision.wordpress.com. And uh, I did one this week about Thanksgiving. Uh, and uh, I did something I I wrote in a blog years, several, I guess it was six years ago, <laughs> called Thanksgiving. And uh, I reminded everybody of uh, what I learned from our friend Laura Cashwell here in Wake Forest, North Carolina, who's a, a lifelong resident of North Carolina. She said, she's the one that taught me that the pronunciation of, isn't Thanksgiving, but Thanksgiving, with the emphasis on the first syllable, because really that's what it's about, is giving thanks. And uh, so Darian and I are very thankful for, uh, for God's blessing and, and his provision. And I want to give thanks to all of you folks who pray for us and support our ministry. Uh, it's very much appreciated. We, we thank you for that. Thank you. And uh, the psalm of thanksgiving I want to share with you is Psalm uh, 100. Make a joyful noise to Jehovah, all you lands. Serve Jehovah with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that Jehovah, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for Jehovah is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Some of you may not have heard that psalm actually using the correct translation. <laughs> uh, many, uh, most English translations say Lord with all capital letters there instead of the name of God, but his name actually appears uh, all those times. One, two, three, four, five times, I guess it is, in this five verses. And so we give our thanks to him. Jehovah is his name. Amen. Well, um, there's a Dry Bones cartoon uh, that was published this week. Uh, and uh, it's a cartoon of, uh says, uh, driving Iranian forces out of Arabia. Of course, it's about the news of the uh, somewhat of an alliance between Saudi Arabia and Israel and some of the other uh, Sunni Arab countries. And uh, the Dry Bones cartoon says, Benjamin of Arabia and the Saudi prince, together they would change the Middle East. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was a cute little cartoon. Uh, Benjamin, of course, referring to Netanyahu and Benjamin of Arabia, kind of like Lawrence of Arabia. But uh, so uh, we'll see what happens with that. But we need to be in prayer about it. That's for sure. Uh, one of the biggest news items this week in the Middle East was the terrible, terrible uh, attack uh, not far from the border of Israel in the Sinai Peninsula along the uh, Mediterranean coast, uh, a little closer to Egypt than to Israel. But uh, there was a terrible uh, attack by ISIS uh, supporters against a mosque killing other fellow Muslims uh, and uh, over uh, 300 uh, were killed 305 I think or something like that was the last number I heard and uh, Dry Bones did a cartoon about that too uh, when I say Dry Bones the cartoonist is Yaakov Kirshen and uh, he said uh, it's, a, it's a picture of his alter ego reading a newspaper saying slaughter in Egyptian Sinai and he and uh, he's reading, it says, in the 20th century, we divided the world into geographical units called nations. But our 21st century world is now threatened by violent ideological units calling themselves servants of their God. And our lives and our national borders mean nothing to them. It's interesting 
that when I saw this cartoon, the thought that came to my mind is how on one end of the of the spectrum, the extreme fanatical uh, Islamic Zionists, or excuse me, Islamic terrorists, uh, on the one end, uh, see no borders in their terror. And on the other end, the left end of the political spectrum, you have the globalists who also erase borders. And uh, we shared a verse from uh, Acts uh, last week, I think it was, uh, where it clearly says that God is the one who sets the borders of nations. And so uh, according to God, there, there are borders. But uh, of course, the enemy knows no borders and, and Satan exists, as, as the Bible says, to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what that spirit does, no matter which end of the political spectrum it's on. Uh, Israel National News has a story this week uh, with a high, the title, Is it true that the UN created Israel? It's interesting, but that's actually uh, a myth. The UN did not create Israel. Uh, the UN did pass a resolution uh, in, uh, on November 29, 1947, called as UN Assembly Resolution 181, uh, where uh, the nations voted, the majority voted in favor of an Israeli nation. But that actually didn't establish Israel as a nation. It wasn't until May 15, uh, 1948, when Ben-Gurion declared an Israeli declaration of independence. In fact, almost all nations became nations by declaring their independence, not by the United Nations. All, in fact, the United Nations resolution is only that, a resolution. It's actually not a law. It has, doesn't have the force of international law. So it wasn't actually the vote of the UN, but the declaration of Israel's independence that uh, was the creation of Israel as a nation. Just thought you ought to know that uh, because that's one of the myths that you hear a lot. And uh, in fact, that is background of the Palestinians thinking that they can go to the UN, get the UN to vote uh, the Palestinians as a state. Well, that doesn't make them a state. <laughs> They're not a state. They don't have a language. They don't have a currency. They don't have a history. They don't have a culture. They don't have anything uh, that's independent. They're, they're simply Palestinian Arabs or Arabs who live in that area of the world. But that they're not a state, and the UN can't make them a state. So we need to pray for truth uh, in this regard. And uh, the scripture the Lord brought to mind in this regard was uh, Psalm 137. Uh, the uh, the uh, scripture begins verse 1 in Psalm 137, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yes, we wept, when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps on the willows in the midst of it, for there were those who carried us away captive, asked us of a song, and those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, sing us the song, one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing Jehovah's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief void, uh, joy. Now, that was written over 2,500 years ago. Uh, that's what establishes the right of the Jews to live in Israel, in their ancient homeland. And uh, so uh, that's another scripture just to keep in mind, Psalm 137, when you're uh, having a discussion with somebody about Israel's right to exist. Depkafile has a story. Uh, U.S. halts arms supplies to Syrian Kurds at Turkey's insistence. Um, there's something that's disturbing going on in, in the relationship between President Trump and Turkey, President Erdogan of Turkey. Uh, right now, Turkey seems to be winning concessions from, from the president. And this is very serious because... Uh, if the U.S. stops supporting the Kurds in Turkey, that'll be like turning our back on our friends because they've been the ones that have actually been doing carrying the fight to ISIS. But uh, there are those in the State Department that believe that now that ISIS is on the run, although they're certainly not defeated, uh, now we need to uh, start making other alliances. And, and as I've said many times, I believe that Turkey is the future home of the 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 real caliphate and the restoration of the caliph that will rule all of Islam. And uh, we should not be making deals with Turkey against our friends. And the Kurds are our friends. So that's just my opinion, but I hope you'll pray about that and listen to what the Lord says. We should continue to supply arms uh, to the uh, Kurds in Turkey, in my opinion. 
Another headline from Israel National News, uh, Iran wants to win while Israel wants to tie. Interesting, interesting statement there. Reminds me of the slogan that's been said in the Middle East for years. Uh, the Muslims say, we're going to win because we love death and you love life. and We're not afraid to die and so forth. Well, this is kind of a twist on that. Iran wants to win while Israel wants to tie. The chairman of the American Friends of Likud uh, said this and said, Democracy, democracies have inherent weakness of not seeking victory against our foes. If you saw think about it, there's, there's some truth to that. Uh, we we want to just sort of reach a, a, an, an agreement, a truce, and stop the fighting. And uh, it's been a number of years now before even the U.S. has fought a war to win it. We just sort of win. We want to make a tie and uh, cease the hostilities. But uh, the only way that we're, there's going to be true victory is if we if we uh, win the war, not just. And of course, we need to pray that, that for Israel as well. Uh, another headline that says uh, Nasrallah, who's the head of the uh, Hezbollah terrorist group in Lebanon. Uh, he, Nasrallah admits we sent weapons to Gaza. He admits that the group transferred advanced weapons to Gaza, including Russian-made Cornet missiles. Uh, in the past, uh, in the conflicts with Israel and Gaza, Gaza has just had short-range kind of homemade missiles. Uh, they couldn't go more than 20 or 30 miles. Now uh, Hezbollah, the enemy on Israel's north, has been supplying longer-range, more accurate missiles. That's very serious. And uh, another article in the Al Jaminer says that Israel incepts, uh, intercepts massive Gaza-bound Gaza explosive shipment, uh, shipment uh, which he, this was last Wednesday that Israel actually uh, caught a truck trying to carry explosives into Gaza at their checkpoint. And because of some high-tech uh, equipment they had, they recognized what was going on and they stopped it. But uh, this is a continuous problem. Some people say it's not right for Israel to have this blockade on on uh, Gaza. Actually, it's not a blockade in the in the literal sense of the word. It's simply checkpoints that stop certain things from coming into Gaza, but supplies, uh, food, medicines, and so forth are allowed in, but they're not allowing explosives in for obvious reasons. In fact, another thing they tend to stop is shipments of cement, because that's used to build tunnels, and uh, there's a big debate about whether or not they should allow that. Sometimes they do, and then Sometimes they stop it. Um, another uh, headline from Israel National News. That the headline says, The terrorist had reason to smile as he rammed people. Uh, the subheadline is, The incentives for terror include having your home rebuilt after its demolition. Nice real estate deal. The background of this is uh, a week ago, on Friday morning, a 17-year-old Arab used his family car to ram, ram into an Israeli and uh, two Israelis uh, just outside of Efrat, and, uh, and, he, and then the driver sped on and ran into another Jew at the Gusechion Junction, uh, mauling the father of five children. And what Israel does when a terrorist is arrested and having, having uh, killed or attacked Israeli citizens is that they destroy his home as, as a deterrent to future terrorist attacks that they wouldn't they realize they have to pay a price and not only be arrested, but they, their home is going to be demolished. Well, the Palestinians now rebuild the home better than it was before, build them a new home. And so that not only do they not have to worry about their home being demolished, they know they're going to get a brand new home, home that's even better. And uh, thus the headline, the terrorist had reason to smile as he rammed people. They had photographs of him smiling, uh, running into people intentionally trying to kill Jews. And uh, then there's another story uh, this week, a little bit later, uh, trans or a minute, yeah, the transportation minister in Israel uh, said, the smiles have been wiped off the Palestinians' faces. <laughs> uh, not relating directly to that previous headline, but to the fact that uh, the Palestinians uh, are given, have been given stronger and stronger uh, demands by President Trump in the U.S. saying they must uh, choose between the axis of evil and the axis of friendship. In other words, are they going to be friends with Israel or are they going to continue to attack Israel and reward the terrorists who do the attacks? And uh, there's been uh, some indications that uh, 
the U.S. is being stronger on the Palestinians and and beginning to be more uh, an honest broker, so to speak. And let's pray that that will continue uh, and that, that they'll be held accountable for their attacks. Here's kind of a really sad story from Israel Today magazine. Israeli girl wounded in the 2011 bombing, a terrorist attack in 2011, six years ago, uh, dies of her wounds almost seven years after the attack. She was in a coma all this time and, uh, and tragically finally died this week. Uh, that illustrates uh, not only are the deaths uh, terrible when there's a terrorist attack, uh, but, but even the wounded uh, have continue to suffer. Uh, and it's just a very sad story. A little better news from Israel today is a, a poll recently conducted in Israel uh, found that uh, an overwhelming 73% of Israeli Arabs said that they feel a sense of belonging in Israeli society. And 60% went so far as to say they're proud citizens of Israel. Uh, that's an overwhelming uh, percentage of the uh, Arab uh, citizens of Israel. And to be willing to actually answer a poll in the first place, <laughs> which uh, in a free society like uh, Israel they're allowed to do, uh, to find that 73% uh, actually are, are happy to be in Israel and 60% said they're proud to be an Israeli. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that there are uh, about a million and a half uh, Arab Israeli citizens of Israel. Here's another story from Israel Today. Israeli researchers debunked the transgender craze that's sweeping America. Uh, the uh, sub-headline of this was uh, pretty interesting. Um, after saying they debunk the transgender craze in America, the, uh, the next line says, In a result that shocked not a single normal person, Israelis find that men are men and women are women. <laughs> and then it goes on into the, into the study, but pretty interesting. Well, um, Times of Israel has a story. Why is the Islamic State obsessed with targeting Muslims? And again, this is a little, little uh, lesser-known truth that uh, more Muslims are killed by ISIS and terrorist groups than non-Muslims. Uh, and that's a rather shocking thing if you didn't know that. And, and of course, relating to the story this week of over 300 e Egyptian Muslims killed by ISIS in the Sinai uh, while they were actually worshiping in, their, in a mosque. Uh, and the question is, why, why does this go on? Well, the fact is, uh, the 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 what the uh, Muslims that were worshiping in that mosque in Egypt in the Sinai were uh, considered Sufi mosque uh, Sufi Muslims, which is uh, a moderate sect, very tolerant, and not r radical fanatics like ISIS, and they're considered apostate by ISIS, and they're they're just as bad. In fact, they're worse than infidels and. In, uh, so to ISIS, they're doing a righteous thing to kill those uh, uh, Sufi Muslims. And you don't want to confuse the term Sufi with Salafist. <laughs> another another uh, sect of Islam is Salafis, and Salafis are actually the radical ones. Sufis are very moderate. Both of these are in the larger group of Sunnis. So you kind of need a scorecard to keep up. But the point is, Muslims kill Muslims, and uh, and that's because the radicals are consider themselves the only true Muslims and the only pure ones. And as I've said many times, it doesn't matter uh, what percentage of Muslims are radical. The fact is, who's driving the bus? When the terrorists are in charge, uh, there could be a tiny minority and they're able to actually dominate the whole society. That's what happened with Nazis in Germany. It wasn't a majority of Germans that were Nazis, but the Nazis were able to take over because of their violence and their ideology. So we must resist all of that. Um, in the story on Fox News this week, ISIS sexual violence victims, minorities are targeted more than than is normally documented. And the fact, the headline, the next part of the headline says that they face honor killings if returned. And it goes on, tells a story about young girls that were kidnapped by ISIS. And if they, if they manage to escape and get back to their families, some of them don't even want to go back to their families because some, when they go back to their families, are then killed by their own families because they have been uh, uh, violated uh, by, the, uh, by the ISIS uh, because of raping them. 
and because they've been raped, they're then murdered by their own family. What kind of a religion is that? Uh, I ask you, and I think the answer would be very clearly, uh, it is a demonic uh, death cult. That's what it is, where, where the radicals uh, kill and rape their victims, and the actual moderate Muslims whose daughters were raped kill their daughters because they were raped. Hmm. Lord have mercy. Jihad Watch has a story uh, from France. A veiled Muslim woman, actually three Muslim women, assault a Jewish woman because she was wearing the Star of David uh, on a pendant. And so they attacked her in just in a, in a shopping center uh, and started a fight with her just because she was wearing the Star of David. And uh, there was a, women attacking other women. Pretty serious. Uh, and then uh, kind of a disturbing story coming out of uh, Zimbabwe. We've talked about the fact that uh, there's been a new president of uh, Zimbabwe. And uh, this story actually suggests that he may be financed. This guy who used to be the vice president may be actually financed by uh, Muslims and a very rich Muslim billionaire. Uh, that's something we need to pray about and watch in Zimbabwe. So uh, kind of pay uh, you know, stay tuned for that. Uh, another story from the Aljaminer.com uh, uh, is that a Tennessee imam accuses Zionists of designs on the sacred Islamic shrine in Mecca. And uh, what he's doing is, this is a Tennessee imam in the United States, is saying that even if Israel is, even if Jerusalem is given over to the Israelis, they're still going. Then the Israeli Zionists are going to go and destroy Mecca, so it's more uh, just trying to hype things up and destroy the, uh, you know, and propaganda against Israel. Of course, Israel just wants to live in peace. <laughs> That's the actual truth. Here's some good news. There's a plan to uh, build a highway across uh, the, what's called the West Bank, which the Bible calls Judea and Samaria. Uh, major highways are being planned, uh, which is sort of a statement that Israel is here to stay. And in fact, it quotes from Isaiah 57, the Jehovah says, build up, build up a highway, clear a road, remove all obstacles from the road of my people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let it be, Lord. And uh, another little bit of good news um, from Times of Israel. There's an Israeli virtual reality camera going uh, into space to film for National Geographic magazine. An astronaut is using a device developed by Israel company. Uh, to document life on the International Space Station in 3D. And uh, just some more of the blessing of God and the restoration of God on Israel and the technology that God's using. Well, and finally, I just wanted to report that the grand opening of the Bible Museum in Washington, D.C. was a great success last weekend. Uh, in fact, uh, the uh, Israeli ambassador to the U.S., Ron Dermer, was one of the speakers at the dedication and uh, in, uh, was talking about the importance of the Bible to uh, really to the whole world, especially to Jews and Christians, because that's the basis of our faith. And so we pray that that'll be a real blessing in in, uh, in the years to come. Well, um, thank you for being with us today. Let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithful blessing and provision. And we just pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for rain in the time of latter rain. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Come back next week. Shalom, shalom.